Whenever you lose something, the first thing you do is you trace your steps. What happens when you lose yourself? It's the same process, you retrace your steps. This process has led me right back to where it all started, East Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York. That's me, young, innocent, and happy baby Trom Diggs. <laughs> My story begins at 673 East 49th Street between Beverly and Clarendon. You know, typical 80s baby, single parent mom, just me, Mom Dukes, and my brother Julius. As time grew and we grew, I discovered my love for music. Probably around five or six years old. This is me right here acting out. This love for music came first in the form of Michael Jackson and Jackson 5, going through some of the old eight tracks. Yes, I said eight tracks that my dad left around. He also had a little record collection, and I discovered the record player. I played these records, Destiny, my Michael Jackson, a lot of uh, Brooke Benton, y'all don't even know nothing about that. A lot of old school R&B and soul records. But then my best friend Greg lived across the street like another big brother to me. He was the first person to really introduce me to hip hop. When I discovered that, everything pretty much came into place for me. Everything came into perspective and my, my enthusiasm for music and my, my love for hip hop pretty much took off. The record I think that really did it for me was Rockbox by Run DMC. That record right there pretty much changed my whole life. I started writing. Started writing around 10 years old. I wrote my first rhyme. And what I never knew at the time and what I you know, now realize is how much hip hop and how much just writing itself would become a part of my life and where it would take me and what it would um, pretty much help me get through. As I grew as a hip hop artist and as I grew as a hip hop fan and as a writer, I began to understand that I was no longer rapping to be the best rapper or rapping to be, you know, for rapping's sake. I was actually using my words and using my music as a way to express thoughts and feelings that I was uncomfortable or unwilling to share in my regular day-to-day -day life. Things that I would feel, things that I would want to express, I would express them easier through music than I would addressing them with the people that I want to address them with or addressing them with myself even. What I'm now discovering and why I decided to take on this project and do this project is that that is a practice known as therapeutic journaling or therapeutic writing. Writing to heal yourself. What I want to do right now with this project and what I decided to do in taking on this project is to introduce the principles and the techniques of therapeutic journaling to everyone because you do not have to be a musician, a writer, an artist in order to write your thoughts and heal from your writing. It's a daily practice that you can use, that I use to get me through. I just happen to express mine through songwriting. But every and anyone can do it and that's what this project is about my journal. Like I said, the beats drive me, the beats inspire me. You know what I mean? Because the music put me in the mood to express that thought. The writer in me is able to articulate my thoughts. The rapper in me is able to take 
those thoughts and put them in rhyme patterns. <laughs> and then le execute laying them on beat. The whole concept behind this project came from a quick conversation I had with my friend and business partner who happens to also be a talented writer and comedian, Randy Tongue, a.k.a. Diff. It's, it's, that's the thing that's bigger than us. Mm -hmm. And it ain't, it ain't no shit like, it ain't no gimmick. Mm -hmm. It ain't gimmick. Like, oh, son, I'm doing this shit for real. Like, I wake up and I write. <laughs> And then, and then it's just falling in line. Like, no, I write, then I get up, and I go perform the shit. Right. I reread it. I go, okay, I need to do this business now. Mm -hmm. I understand what the... Because I had a whole bunch of thoughts before, like, all that shit. And I just didn't know how to get it out. Because it was, like, too much. It was, like, too much. You know what I'm saying? It was too much, and it was too scattered. Like, not even scattered. Like, I had it. But then... I think I was worried about getting it down like in joke form, which I know better than, but I don't, you know. You just didn't have a form. You yeah. Didn't have a, a you don't have a method. Yes. <laughs> and that's why I told the fucking youth the other day, it's like. And just from that conversation that you're seeing right now, we went into like my writing and his writing techniques, and then we stumbled upon the idea that what what I was doing in my music and what he was doing in his comedy is literally called journaling and that there's an entire uh, um, principle and method called therapeutic journaling and then we needed to explore therapeutic journaling the parallel between what that is and what we do and just learn how to um, create a structure in our own writing that would help develop it help bring it out and help us to bring out more of, of of you know who we are and what we are and what we want to do so the question is what is therapeutic journaling and what is journaling period and that's what we had to go find out hello i'm jean rice and i have been in marketing communications and business writing for most of my 25 plus year career. About 10 years ago, I discovered a different aspect of writing called journaling, which is simply writing for yourself. And I started to pursue that a little bit more, look into it, and found out that you could get certified in that field. And I did get certified just about a year and a half ago from the Center for Journal Therapy. After I got certified by the Center for Journal Therapy, I decided to take what had become my passion and make it more of a business. And not just a business, but it's a way for me to offer what I think is the ultimate self-help tool to everybody that I can possibly come into contact with. People that I work with right now range for all ages. It's really all ages and all walks of life. I have run groups for young adults who are just graduating from college and aren't really sure what they want to do with their lives or with their careers, and they find the journaling process very helpful with that. I have worked with some teens who have some body image issues. I've worked with parents of children with autism, ADD, ADHD, and other special needs to help them deal with their special challenges. And I've worked with a lot with people who are just in life transitions, whether it's a midlife change, a career change, or empty nest, divorce, or loss of a loved one. Why, why do you think that is that, that people turn to it at, at, a, at, a, at a point where their life is changing? What, what do you think? Why do you think that happens? Why do people turn to journaling at that point, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that the people who turn to journaling are becoming aware that there is something more inside of them that they're just not able to get access to. A lot of people who are turning to journaling also try meditation, they try yoga, they try a lot of these alternative or wellness types of modalities. But journaling is a great one because anybody can do it. They can do it anytime, anywhere. You don't need any special equipment. 
And again, it's just writing for yourself. It's writing that's not meant to be shared. And I think for a lot of people, that feels very safe. What you got here? It's the box. Everyone has the box. This is the box. I could expose a few people right now, but I'm not going to do that. But <laughs> this is uh, one book of ROMs. This is actually <coughs> a pad from one of my old jobs. Shout out to um, GPHA. <coughs> one love. <laughs> pad from the work. See, I would just write on everything. That's the whole thing. Like, I write on everything. So, and I write everywhere. In fact, I generally get inspired to write when I'm not supposed to be writing. It's, it's weird how that happens. So this is a work pad. Uh, this is just a random pad that I got from a drug company while working at GPHA that I decided to make into a little rhyme book, you know, because it was probably sitting next to me. We got pictures. Birthday cards, Christmas cards, Valentine's Day cards. Valentine's Day cards, move. <laughs> None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is this is real, man. This is the last card. I got from my mom and if you see it says I'm proud you're my son when, when did she get that to you um it had to have been January of 1997 it's weird right because you don't know you're going somewhere when you write, you give this card, but it sounds like someone who's no longer here. <laughs> like it sounded like I'm not going to be around forever, but I did my best and I'm proud of who you became.